Did you know your bottled water might be more harmful than you think? Welcome to Channel Health Alerts. Recent studies have found that a typical 1 liter bottle of water can contain an average of 240,000 plastic fragments. Many of these fragments have historically gone unnoticed, leading researchers to believe that health concerns related to plastic pollution may be dramatically underestimated. In a groundbreaking new study, it was discovered that bottled water could contain 10 to 100 times more bits of plastic than previously estimated. These are nanoparticles so tiny they cannot be seen under a microscope. Imagine something one thousandth the average width of a human hair. These nanoplastics are so small they can migrate through the tissues of the digestive tract or lungs into the bloodstream, distributing potentially harmful synthetic chemicals throughout the body and into cells. A single liter of water was found to contain seven types of plastics, 90% of which were identified as nanoplastics. This new finding supports the long-held expert advice to drink tap water from glass or stainless steel containers to reduce exposure. This advice extends to other foods and drinks packaged in plastic as well. Now, you might wonder, what's the big deal about nanoplastics? Well, experts say that nanoplastics are the most worrisome type of plastic pollution for human health. These tiny particles can invade individual cells and tissues in major organs, potentially interrupting cellular processes and depositing endocrine-disrupting chemicals such as bisphenols, ephthalates, flame retardants, and heavy metals. All of these chemicals are used in plastic manufacturing, so if plastic makes its way into our bodies, it's carrying those chemicals with it. And because our body temperature is higher than the outside, those chemicals are going to migrate out of the plastic and end up in our bodies. They can be carried to the liver, kidney, and brain, and even cross the placental boundary and end up in an unborn child. Despite these alarming findings, there is still more research to be done. Scientists are still trying to understand what happens once the plastic polymer and the endocrine-disrupting chemicals enter the body's cells. Do they remain disrupting or damaging cellular processes, or does the body manage to expel them? While science works on these questions, there are measures we can take to reduce our exposure to plastics. Consider avoiding foods and beverages in plastic containers and look for alternatives to plastic in our daily lives, whenever possible. Remember, every small step can lead to a larger impact in protecting our health and the environment. Take care.